Following the collapse of Bagan, most of the major cities in the former empire went their separate ways, declaring themselves as kingdoms and war with each other over territory and power. In addition to the Bama, Rakhine and Mun city-states, the Yuan occupation made the Shan princes a serious political force. Throughout the 13th century, the Taishan peoples had migrated into Southeast Asia, setting up several kingdoms around the region, including the state of Mogaon in Myanmar, the home kingdom in what is now Assam, Vietchan in Lao, and Sukhothai and Lana in modern-day Thailand. When the empire fell and the Mongols departed, the Taishans rose to fill in the vacuum. Mogaon grew in influence and power, and several new Taishan states appeared all over northern Myanmar. There were dozens of these principalities. The vast majority, however, were little more than towns. Some of the most powerful of these were Mongyan, Mogao, Mongnai, Mongmit, Gaotong, Tibo, and Thaini. The Burmese traditionally call all Thai speakers Shans, which is thought to have been derived from the word Siam. Unlike the Thai Shans in modern-day Thailand, the Shans of Burma never formed a centralized kingdom. The highlands made communication and travel difficult and provided the settlements with natural fortifications. This led to many petty squabbles among the Shans and despite their formidable manpower, the Shan lords were the least united among the major Burmese realms. Meanwhile, in the south, the Mon-speaking cities made a resurgence. A commoner named Wariru took advantage of the chaos in the collapse of the empire to lead a revolt in the city of Motama. He allied with the cities of Pago and Pathane and defeated the Pagan and later the Mianzang attempts to retake them. To secure their position, Wariru solidified the ties by getting rid of his rivals and forming the kingdom of Hanpawari based in Bago, and then later became a vessel of the powerful Sukhothai kingdom in the east. Hanpawari would become one of the most, if not the most, prosperous post-Bagan kingdom in Myanmar, controlling many of the ports and the mouth of the river and they would soon be fully independent of Sukhothai in 1330. Unfortunately, however, this prosperity and the strategic position led to a strong rivalry among the powerful cities, with Motama being particularly resentful of Bogo's leadership. Despite King Wariru's attempts to centralize the kingdom, Hantari remained primarily a confederation of the three major cities and would not become a centralized state until the 1380s under the mighty Yazadarit one of the most famous monarchs in Burmese history. To the west in the Rakhine, it was known in history as the Limro period because the four powers centered around four cities, Piansa, Berin, Karit, and Langjet. We have little information about them during this period, but it seems that despite their access to the Myanmar coastline, the Rakhine cities never managed to consolidate their lands and it was politically and militarily the weakest of the post bagan period. The land would become a battleground for its neighbors with the Rakhine lords being pawns of other kingdoms in Bengal and Burma until the 16th century and the rise of the Mrauk dynasty. In what was once the heart of Bagan, the youngest of the Mianzang brothers, Thiethu, consolidated central Myanmar into a centralized kingdom, but the realm would split him and his sons into the Pinya and Zagain kingdoms. In the midst of their rivalry, they fell prey to the growing Shan influence. Central Myanmar would not unite until 1364, a descendant of both Jozwa of Bagan and Thiethu of Mianzai. The Do Mimya founded the city and kingdom of Ava. There, Ava achieved what Mianzai failed to do and consolidated central Myanmar. They pushed the Shan raids back and even pulled some of the Shan principalities into the kingdom through political marriage and strategic military actions. By controlling the central plains, Ava had access to one of the largest population centers and could field a larger number of horse-mounted cavalry than the other realms. But in turn, they were also surrounded by rivals on all sides, making any simultaneous wars problematic. The major political centers shifted constantly, but these four regions were where the culture and language of modern Bama, Mun, Rakhine, and Shan developed. It was also during this period some of the most romanticized stories, heroes, and events in Burmese literature occurred. It should be noted that these kingdoms were all multi-ethnic societies, and their ethnic labels came from the 19th and 20th century colonial authors who were heavily influenced by the ideals of nationalism and ethnocentrism. 
For instance, the demographics of the Shan states consisted of a wide range of peoples consisting of Kachin, Chin, Karani, Wa, Pa'o, and Bamas. A truly centralized authority would not appear in Myanmar until 1576, nearly two centuries later. These two centuries have often been compared to the Warring States era of many countries, with some authors even calling it the Dark Ages. But this is generally due to the English language Myanmar literature, which is heavily focused on the 40 years war between the Ava-led North and the South under Bagul. Many surviving literary works such as poetry, religious texts and arts appeared during this time. Furthermore, Theravada Buddhism remained a uniting influence in all these realms. This era as a whole is an understudied aspect of Myanmar history in the English language and I highly recommend the future historians to pursue this.